Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 172 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my very best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, leave your question in the comment section below and as I said, hopefully you'll be featured. And before we get started on this week's questions, I do want to say a big thank you to Dean Backhouse for increasing his patreon subscription thank you so much buddy it really does help the channel and with all that being said if you do happen to enjoy this video hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new i've had a bunch of new subscribers in the last month so thank you once again for that for supporting the channel with all that being said let's get straight on to the first question major camo says another home run tim question for next week would you rather see a tk trooper or the best guard jet trooper from the mando season three in the vintage collection I would probably have to say the Beskar Jet Trooper, and if I was pushed on it, I'd probably say that's my most wanted figure from Season 3. I think they look pretty awesome in that in that white armour uh, with the jetpacks and everything. I thought they're a much better design than anything we got in the sequel trilogy, for example. I think they look really, really cool, so yeah, I would definitely have to pick those. Justin Vega says, hey Bosk, I have two questions for next week. One, with the upcoming wave that includes the new Endor Han Solo sculpt, do you think a simple repaint will do for a New Hope Han Solo, or would an entirely new Han Solo sculpt be better? Two, do you think the price will be the same or more for the potential TVC Jabba and Throne set that might be similar to the Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike set? Hope you're having a speedy recovery. Uh, well, to answer the second part of your question there, the potential TVC Jabba and Throne set, I really do hope that that is going to be a thing. That would be that would be awesome. In terms of the price, I really have no idea. It depends what's included in it. Um, I would say I wouldn't want it to be any more than forty dollars, thirty-five, forty pounds, something like that, for a Jabba and some accessories, maybe another figure in there. I wouldn't want it to be any more than that. But we'll have to wait and see what they do with that, if anything at all. In terms of the Han Solo Endor, that figure, believe me, is better than it looks in the uh, promo shots that we have for it. When you actually saw it sort of like in the cabinets at Celebration, set up in like dioramas and stuff that Emily did, it looked loads better than, you know, I first thought, thank God. However, I don't think it's good enough to be a, um, a New Hope Han Solo repaint or whatever. For one, I don't really like the split on the upper torso. I think they need to ditch that. Um, it makes him look a little bit on the podgy side, should I say. But the head sculpt is actually pretty good in the flesh. Believe me, it looked much better than it did look on those promo images. Dark Knight Matt says, Hey BB, I absolutely love your videos and I've been watching you for such a long time now and you actually got me back into collecting Star Wars figures. That's great news, buddy. Thanks so much. He says, My question is, with the recent reveal of the Hayden Christensen Anakin figure, do you think that we will ever get a Sebastian Shaw release or do you think we're going to get stuck with the Hayden? Keep up the great work. Get well soon. So I'm not 100% sure what you mean about this question. Are you talking about the Force Ghost pack in the Black Series? Or are you talking about the Darth Vader with Hayden Christensen's likeness? If you're talking about that, and are we going to be stuck with that one? What I would say is that it is pretty unfortunate that we are going to be getting the Hayden Christensen head sculpt on that Return of the Jedi Vader. Whereas the Black Series are getting a uh, Sebastian Shaw it looks like anyway that is unfortunate and it, it's yeah and I think the only reason that they've done that is because they did pipeline that we're going to be getting the Vader and Obi-Wan 2 pack uh, the battle damaged Vader and if that's the case obviously they're going to have to show a little bit of the face through the mask and they want that to be Hayden Christensen so to kill two birds with one stone they've they've done that and it is a bit unfortunate and it's probably what we're going to be stuck with unfortunately if I'm honest, I don't really see them sort of re-releasing that Return of the Jedi Vader uh, with, with a Sebastian Shaw um, head sculpt. I hope when they come round to doing the Force Ghost for the TVC that we do get the Sebastian Shaw. I really do hope so, but, you know, I'm not even sure if we'll ever get those figures in TVC, to be honest. There's too much other stuff for them to do. John Miko TVC says, great 171st ABB, Tim. Great to hear the mention of the fan petition for Velcan. If you were to petition for one figure in TVC that's not named Garen Dan, then who would it be? I've tried to really think about this one because it's a really, really tough one. Um, obviously, they've done so much in the past, and I'm trying to think of a figure that's like, like never been made or something that I think 
probably won't ever get made and therefore would need a petition. So I was trying to think about that and, you know, obviously there's still some other Jabber's goons that we need and things like that, but I love the cool aliens and I was thinking about Rogue One and like someone like Pal, for example, awesome character, awesome alien character um, in that sort of rebel fight scene. And I just don't think we'll ever get that figure. So um, if I was ever to do a petition, it would be for somebody like that, or maybe two tubes. I was going to pick two tubes, but I think there's a possibility that, you know, two tubes could end up being made. But pal, I probably don't think so. Channel member Zombie Duck says another great video. BB question for next week. Should fans consider the Jabba Denizens four pack the finale of the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary, or do you think there might be one more surprise? Thanks and get well soon. Um, I personally think that it could be. The, the last of the 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi. In terms of the things that I've heard about anyway, there was there was quite a lot of, that I had heard about before it was revealed. So that four pack being one of them. Um, and there's nothing really left sort of on my list of stuff that I know about for the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, unfortunately. There is, there is one thing that I have heard a rumor about, but I've got that down as being 2024. So it wouldn't be 40th anniversary, but it would be Return of the Jedi. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see because obviously sometimes you hear about these things and then things can change and you know you don't want to sound like an idiot when you've said something's coming and it's not because they've basically changed so uh, but yeah hopefully we will get more return of the jedi stuff but as i say nothing that i know about at this point meg dj says hi tim hope you're on the mend it seems the celebration was a super spreader event unfortunately it certainly was my friend my question for next week is, now we have seen the TIE Interceptors several times in the recent Star Wars series, do you think we'll get a reissue with the new paint apps in Mando or Return of Jedi box? I do hope so, as my favourite vehicle from my childhood I never got in the 80s. Love the channel, BB. Keep it up. You're a proper fella. I'd have a beer with and talk Star Wars. Absolutely, my friend. Um, I, Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that we haven't got it, to be honest, because, as you say, it has been... Um, seen quite a few times now in the Mandalorian season three the interceptor is a very cool vehicle the one that came out in the vintage collection uh, what in 2011 or whenever it was is a decent enough one um, I think it's a pretty pretty decent vehicle some may disagree with that but I thought as far as tie interceptors go I thought it was pretty cool and I'm with you buddy I absolutely love the tie interceptor I mean I have this one here I mean it's impossible to get into shot but this is the vintage one basically um, and that was always the TIE Fighter that I had as a child. I never had the actual normal TIE Fighter. I only ever had the Interceptor. So it holds a special place for me too, buddy. Um, but yeah, I am surprised they haven't done that one, to be honest. You would have thought that this would have been the perfect time. John Loner says, hope you're in full recovery after last week's celebration. Love the coverage. Thank you, buddy. Question for next week. Given that Jabba's Bibs Boba's Palace playset seemed to, like a no-brainer for a HasLab project, but ended up being offered via Hasbro Pulse, do you think other playsets like Wuha's Cantina might go a similar route? I'm picturing the bar and entrance being offered through Hasbro Pulse with complementary alcoves with figures that could be retailer exclusives. I think that's a perfectly legitimate idea you have right there. As you've mentioned, they've done the, you know, Bib Fortuna's Boba Fett's Palace through Hasbro Pulse. So why couldn't they do a Cantina? And yeah, I could see... I could see that working actually where you maybe get the bar area to begin with all the, with all the stalls around it and then maybe they release an alcove set with you know two chairs and a table the alcove which you can use three or four different times basically so i think that's a pretty good idea personally uh will they do it is another matter entirely danny allen says amazing as always mate question for next week we all saw the bib in the photos at celebration they said he would be on a card back when they revealed the throne room palace if they cannot get black chrysanthemum on a card back do you think they will pull it off with fat bib or do we get fat bib fortuna loose in the set what say you cheers may the force be with you i'm still convinced that we're going to be getting that figure on a card back emily did say that that was going to be the case they're just trying to work out how exactly they do that i would imagine it'll be a fairly big bubble very much like the Gamorrean Guard. I think if they can get the Gamorrean Guard on a card back, they can definitely get Fat Bib Fortuna. I don't even think he's as big as that figure personally. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm pretty sure that they will card that figure as they said they would originally. Scout Trooper 75 says, Hi BB, glad you had a blast at Celebration. When they revealed Squidhead, I said that Crafty Tim, you did drop a couple of hints here and there. Question for next week. What do you think of the Praetorian Guards that killed Paz in Mando? They looked a lot like the ones in the sequel trilogy when Snoke gets killed. 
my stomach started to churn a little. Disney definitely wanted to solidify that bridge between the sequel and original trilogies. Cheers, buddy. I, I personally think that The Mandalorian's always been doing that since it kind of started. Um, I, I always thought that we would see certain things from the sequel trilogy pop up in The Mandalorian. I actually quite like the Praetorian Guards. I thought the Praetorian Guards were probably the best thing and design out of The Last Jedi. They were the best thing to come out of The Last Jedi, in my opinion. I, I, I actually like them. I have one here, the Vintage Collection one here. There are some subtle differences with the helmets. The helmets in The Mandalorian look a lot more Mandalorian-esque than this one does. Um, and possibly even the armor. I'm not even sure if they had those like sort of ribbed effect on, on the arms there. I can't actually remember. I'll have to have a look. But um, I didn't mind them being in The Mandalorian at all. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the sequel trilogy, as you know. But I think the uh, sort of time in between The Mandalorian Season 3 and The Force Awakens is still quite big uh big enough not to sort of connect it too much just a few little instances here and there talk of cloning and thing like that i'm not really too bothered about it really to be honest sbs production says hello bb i hope you're recovering from the covid question for next week with the ahsoka trailer out and seeing that it will be heavily feature characters from star wars rebels obviously this is a perfect opportunity to give us those characters in the vintage collection but what i wanted to ask you is if you think it's possible we could have a retro collection wave based on the Ahsoka series. Thanks, as always. See you next week. I think it's entirely possible. It's probably likely. If they're doing one for the Book of Boba Fett, which isn't going to be as big a series as, as Ahsoka, then you can bet your bottom dollar that they will be doing retro collection for Ahsoka. They seem to be going down that road, don't they? So yeah, I would expect it. Phenomenaut says, question for next week. There was some phrasing during the Hasbro panel at Celebration that emphasized the word dreamy and the phrase, you will be, you will be. Given those not so subtle hints, what do you think the chances are that the upcoming HasLab isn't the ghost, I'd be gutted if it's not, but is instead a Dagobah playset? I have a vague recollection of that rumour being tossed around last year or so. Thanks for everything you do. That that was a rumour that came out um, just before the Razor Crest, so quite a few years ago now. But I honestly don't think the Dagobah playset was or is or ever will be a HasLab project. I just don't think there's enough really going on with it. Um, you know, if they're ever to do a Yoda's hut, that should just be a separate playset, basically. The rest of it is just an X-Wing and some trees and some swamp. It's not really too much to it, is there? And a couple of characters that can be involved as well. Not too much going on. In terms of the word dreamy, you know, that is just the fact that the HasLab is a dream project type thing. That's what they've always said and classed HasLabs are, dream projects. So that's where that comes from. But I wouldn't really read too much into the you will be you will be thing no oh and by the way uh obviously the reason that i have these two card backs here and a couple of the figures here is because i have been doing reviews of the new wave of tvc figures so i've reviewed the clone trooper and admiral piet hunter will be next on the channel um then cassian and then probably star killer but yeah please be sure to check out those videos on the channel reckless deck says tim thanks for all the celebration updates and sorry to hear that you got whacked by the rona I was shocked to see how much the Rebels characters were featured in the Ahsoka trailer. I thought we were going to have to work a lot harder to get them all to make their appearances. Question, do you think that means we'll get one or more waves of Ahsoka TVC figures released or at least pipelined? That include the live action Rebels crew before the end of the year. Also, I know it sounds like the Ghost is the next HasLab, but my question is how much do you think the ship will feature in the new Ahsoka show? I personally don't think it's going to be animated rebels nostalgia that justifies it being a haslab i think this means it will be a serious tie-in to the new show absolutely there's no doubt about that whatsoever i'm not too sure if they were going to do a haslab ghost they could just do it off the back of rebels in my opinion i think they need it to be in live action as well and we know it's going to be in live action it was in the trailer it was in the teaser and everything uh, we know the ghost crew or some of the ghost crew are going to be in ahsoka and in terms of like Ahsoka waves, I don't think we'll get a whole wave of Ahsoka figures. I think there's going to be two waves towards the end of the year. One has the Luke training and the other one has R5-D4. I would suspect that some of the figures in those two waves are going to be from new media and that will include Ahsoka. Um, I'm 99% sure that we're going to get at least four characters from Ahsoka. So you'll have to sort of rack your brains about which ones you think those are and rob ernest says great videos always bb question for next week if 
the next HasLab offering is the Ghost as rumoured, it would be extremely likely that the figures of the Ghost crew would be offered as tiers. If Hasbro does include them, do you think that they'll make the figures of the characters accurate to the Rebels cartoon or of the new media? I personally think it would be a letdown for collectors if we got the Ghost with new media versions of the characters, namely Hera, Sabine and Ezra, because it very may well be the only opportunity Hasbro has to do the Phoenix Squad from the OT era in TVC form. Thoughts? Keep up the excellent content. Okay, so if, and it is a big if, remember, if the HasLab is the Ghost, then I fully expect that the figures that will be, if they're going to be tiers or however they do that, I think they'll be the the cartoon versions or, you know, um, realistic interpretations of the, how they look in the cartoon. I think the characters that you'll get in the main line on their own card backs uh, in, in, the, in the two waves that I mentioned, um, if any of those are going to be Rebels characters, then they will be based on their appearances in Ahsoka, if that makes sense. That's my prediction anyway. That's how I think they will do it. They will most likely use the same sculpt and there'll be repaints or use many of the same parts. But that's basically how they'll get like two versions of the same character out there basically and, you know, make more money that way. David Stevens says, hi, you Tim. Hope you have recovered from illness and are feeling much better. I am. Thank you. Still can't taste though, but I am feeling a lot better. So thank you. Question for next week. Now that The Mandalorian Season 3 has finished, let's start talking about the TVC figures that we most want from the series. What are your top five most wanted TVC figures from Mando Season 3? Keep up the good work, mate. Okay, so number one has to be the um, white jet trooper, Mandalorian troopers or whatever they were, as I mentioned earlier on in the video. That's definitely uh, my number one. Um, I would also like uh, the new Moff Gideon in his dark trooper armor with the, with that awesome helmet i would like that as a figure i would take a new version of the praetorian guard um if it was an updated version that version that we can see here um needs updating it needs rocker ankles and needs the new barbell hips and things like that to make it even more poseable than it already is but i do like the designs of those guys they remind me of the the royal guards and now that they've featured in the mandalorian i I do like them a little bit more than I did before. <laughs> and then, of course, I would like IG-12. I'm not too sure how they would accomplish that with the, the body of IG-11 being able to get the Grogu in there. Not really too sure how they'd accomplish that, but it looked cool and I thought it was a pretty funny part of the show. Um, there's four. I can't really think of any others at the moment. Um, I'd have to go back and watch the show. The problem with the Mandalorian Season 3 that I thought is that the, the, the two episodes at the end were were very very good and progressed the story on very quickly a little bit too quickly i would like to have seen the threat of moff gideon way before you know maybe in episode three or something like really early on just to set that up it was like here's moff gideon and goodbye moff gideon it, it, it was all a bit too quick for me um great episodes though and in in the main i enjoyed the series but i just don't think it was as good as the previous series if um if i'm being honest there but um uh, yeah, so those are the at least four characters that I want from The Mandalorian Season 3. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. I want to thank you for submitting your questions. And if you do have a question for next week's episode, please leave it in the comment section below and let's keep this series going. I want to say a big thank you to everybody for watching, my new subscribers, and to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support helps a great deal, helps with channel expenses, um, allows me to make more and better videos. So thank you so much. So thanks for watching everybody and we shall see you on the next one.